Hello and welcome to an episode of Hard Space Ship Builder. Yeah, my name is uh, Vinny, and uh, today we're gonna put together a uh, light goggle macro for a uh, customer. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in on this and uh, see what we can build for him. So, in case you ain't too familiar with how ship building works, let me give you a quick rundown. You see here, this is a list of all the parts that the boss expects us to install in the first shift. And we gotta get all this stuff in, and this is the value of it. Now we're on this screen, if you see the uh, yellow bar, that's our total list of supplies. And the uh, little red on the end, that's uh, the little bits like the bolts and the screws and the whatnot. You know, sometimes we have a few pieces left over, but that's okay, that's letting us know that's how many of the little bits we got, and so we'll use that up also during the shift. So, that being said, let's get into it. So, of course, we're going to start the shift with this nice, clean, empty base. See, here, look around, see how nice and clean it is. I mean, you know, there might be a few things floating around from previous jobs, but uh, it's nice and empty, you know, and there's a uh, few things down there on the barge there that, uh, you know, they're going to want us to install. You know, during this first shift. But we don't get to picking them up as we need them. Now, a good thing to do at the beginning of any uh, new job is to, uh, you know, use your visor. Look around a little bit. Make sure no, uh, no parts got left behind by some other previous builder. Now, when you're going to start building the ship, you got to know where you're going to build it at. So, it's good to bring out, you know, like a panel piece or something like that. Just kind of put it out there in the air to mark the kind of general area you're going to start building in. And it's always nice to bring a little bit of stuff out of the furnace. These are just going to be your initial bag of, you know, screws and bolts and whatnot, just for your initial connections. And now that we know about where we want to put the ship, we can start bringing out the important parts, you know, like the cockpit. You kind of start with the cockpit, you know, it's the head of the ship. Wherever you put the cockpit, that kind of determines where you're going to put everything else. And this is a good opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the tools we got. You see them blue lines? Them blue lines, those are what we call pushers. See, we use them to push the things out into the bay where we want them. And the hand tool, that thing, that's what we call the attractor. And, you know, sometimes we also call it the manipulator. But you see the green line, that's what we use when we are marking which pusher that we want to disconnect. So next we need to bring, you know, the interior shell out because that's what we're going to form the body around. As you can see, it's missing a lot of parts. You know, it's a prefab. There's some pieces already on it, but, you know, there's empty spaces so that we can add to it, customize a ship for the customer. Now, is it good building those? One of the first things you've got to secure is where you're going to put the reactor. Now, this, this is the reactor plate. Now, we got to weld it onto some aluminum. And then we gotta weld that aluminum into the inner body. That way, later on, when we get to the reactor, we can just put it right in place. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, here's a pro tip from an experienced builder. When you put the part in place, it's pretty easy to hold it there. If you just attach something to the back of it, just as a temporary holding thing, to keep it in the frame until you can properly weld the entire piece into the body. See, here I'm just using fabric. Real simple because they got bolts on the back of them. They'll hold it right in place. We're in space. It's super easy. And watch, we'll just weld them right into place and it's just good as new. And now that's welded in place, our supervisor, Frankie the Weaver Gambini. He's on the inside, you ain't gonna see him. He'll engage some more pushers and push it the rest of the way in place until I indicate that they need to be disconnected. I know what you're saying. Hey Vinny, if you're such an experienced builder, why you need a uh, supervisor on shift while you're working? Well, you know, it's union rules. There's nothing I can do about it.
See, it, Weaver is uh, throwing a bunch of glass at me. He knows I'm an experienced builder. He don't need to walk it out here with a pusher because I'm good at what I do and I'll catch it. So here we uh, installed the glass in the front of the cockpit and it's a tool. I know we haven't really talked about it. You know, I mentioned it does some welding. It also has a sealant mode. You know, don't use it a whole lot, but you definitely need to use it when you're installing glass. You don't want to weld glass, but you know, it's a universal tool. It can do all kinds of crazy stuff. But, uh, you know, if you ever take up this job, it's something you'll just have to learn. So we haven't really gone over what the different bays do. Obviously, you saw that I pulled the cockpit out of the assembly bay, but the furnace there is used to form most of the basic parts, especially stuff like made out of aluminum. So like these interior panels, which I'm going to install into the floor, the roof, and both sides of the cockpit. They're all preformed there in the furnace before they send them out here for me to wheel them in. Now if you're good with your welding tool, as you can see, you can weld multiple parts in at the same time. You can tell the difference between an experienced builder and the rookie by using this technique. Oh, that weaver fellow, he's keeping me on my toes. You see that? He trying to fire them off from either side, trying to catch me off. But you know, I'm too good for that. He thinks it's funny. You're going to see a lot of that. He does that all the time. Most times the prefabs come with lights already installed in them, but you know, we gotta make sure that the one in the cockpit's there and working good, because, you know, the pilots gotta see what they're doing. So I prefer to install that one myself. It's a difference in quality, you know, not relying on someone else to get that right. It's a real safety hazard if that light don't work properly. It's also a good chance for you guys to see how the attractor can be used to pick an object up off the barge, which brings in pre-manufactured tronics and, uh, and whatnot that needs to be installed into the ship. Now, traveling through space can be particularly hazardous due to radiation. You know, people who grew up on Earth, they got used to having that, uh, what they call, magnetosphere or whatnot. But uh, when you're in space for a long period of time, you need to have radiation filters. And here, we were pushed out a radiation housing, which we are going to weld into the body. And then we are going to install a filter in it. So that it'll keep the occupants safe from excess radiation. Because we don't need mutants flying around in space. Yeah. 
Now this here is a class 1 reactor. Now all we got to do is uh, attach it to the plate that we welded into place previously. And that's all it takes. You know, it's uh, not nearly as complicated as them class 2 jobbies. And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and grab the radiation filter and put it in place. See here, we got a connection on each side. And this is all about efficiency. You know, you're on that side of the ship. Install it while you're there. Now your weaver is pushing out the prefab outer shell for the starboard side of the ship. Now one of the things you really want to do is before the prefab gets pushed into place, you want to get things like fuel tanks up inside between the inner wall and the outer wall so that it's easier to install them later when it's all in place. That's another little detail that rookies miss all the time. Now here's a twin nacelle. We'll have a couple of these, one on each side. And as you can see, it comes with a pre-installed piece of pipe, which we can just weld into the pipe that was already installed in the outer wall. As well as securing the nacelles to the outer hull to make sure it don't come loose neither. Then we gotta go through the inner wall and the outer wall and attach them with weld points so it don't come apart when they're flying. And finally we wanna do a pressure test on the pipes before there'll be fuel going through them. Now if you'll see the timer at the top of my screen it's telling me it's just about break time. You know, in the Union, we get a break every 15 minutes. But Weaver, you know, he's kind of busting me. He's already pushing out the back of the ship as if I ain't gonna fish this thing in two shifts anyway. So we go ahead and move that into place so that we can prepare to work on that next shift and we'll get a quick weld in place so that it won't get drifting around. Now, see you back here an hour after I've added brewski. I got to eat some of my Guma's reheated gobble goo. Now, as you can see here, here's a list of all the parts that we have left to install in our second shift. And of course, the yellow line, as you can see, is starting to go down because of how much we have already built. Okay, so, uh, you know, I'll get a little eager sometimes, and uh, it's kind of rushed out here to start working again, and I forgot to turn the camera back on. Uh, you know, no big deal, it's just flying here from the uh, hab, so, you know, sue me. You didn't miss nothing. So anyways, we're going to install ourselves a little power cell here in the back. You know, these uh, little macros, they don't take a whole lot. So, you know, you don't really have to put much into them. And of course, we want to get the uh, other stuff in here before the wall gets into place. Because, you know, Weaver, he don't give you no time to rest. I swear, this Goomba is going to be the death of me someday. going to install a uh, airlock console here right quick because you know it's going to get a lot harder to get in this ship once we seal it up if we ain't got a door handle. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> no, forget about it. Now of course before we weld the uh, outer shell into place we need to install the port side twin the cell. Now you know, they didn't leave as much pipe on there for me to weld to this time, but you know, I'm good. I don't need it. Now here's another little detail that some of the rookies will miss. You want to pressurize the pipes on the side of this ship that has the airlock before you weld the airlock in the place. The reason you want to do that is because 
you know, if there's any kind of little mishap when you're welding the airlock, you could possibly puncture the pipe, and you won't know it until they actually fire up the ship when it's got fuel in it. And then, boom! Everything goes everywhere! Oh, you don't want to do that. So, always pressurize your pipe before you weld in the airlock. Now, despite it being awfully cold out in space, you'll find that most pilots they like a lot of AC. So you want to make sure you get some coolant tanks on the inside of the shell for the cockpit before the walls go in. Because if you don't, they are real bad to install afterwards. As you can see, they ain't a lot of clearance. Be sure to put them on both sides. They really like the AC. Uh, now look at this atmospheric regulator. Bargain bin recycle regulator. I could tell by looking at it, that thing ain't gonna work. But it's okay, because we have a crew that comes through after we assemble a ship, and they test all the parts, and they'll fix those little things. You know, nothing I can do about it. All I can do is install what I'm given. Next, we're going to weld the cockpit to the body of the ship. We want to make sure there are four welds because we don't want that thing coming off after they start moving. It'd be a real bad day for the pilots and the occupants. <laughs> Now this here is a class 1 thruster. This is going to be used to get the ship around in local space. And all we got to do is put a little cap on the end of it, a couple of quick spot welds, and we all good. Now here we are locking the thrust into place so it don't move around none. This here is the console that eventually will be used to do engine diagnostics and to make sure the flow was regulated and everything. And now that the major parts of the outer shell are done, it's time to start putting in the roof and the floor and of course bringing in all the items that we are going to need to install inside the ship. Now we will be a little bit back and forth on installing panels on the top and the bottom and bringing parts in as it becomes more convenient before we put the floor in of course we need to install everything inside the cockpit. Now this takes a little bit of finagling. I tell you it takes a lot of practice to be able to install all of these parts from out here. I tell you, if you ever watch a rookie, he'll watch them to fly each individual piece in and bolt it into place. But like I said, I'm a real pro here, so I can do all of it from outside the cockpit. Let's get 
Now you can't forget the interior airlock controls because you want them to be able to get out after they've been sealed inside. Ugh, look at this, another busted atmospheric regulator. I swear, I think they get these shoddy parts off the back of a shady gecko salvage runner. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, don't tell my rep that I said that. You know, I don't know nothing. You know, at this point, the ship starts to take shape pretty fast. Hey, ship shape. I wonder if that's where they got that phrase. <laughs> so anyway, once the uh, roof is in place, they can actually use pushers to push the uh, cargo up into place. Just like that. Pretty slick, ain't it? And here we're going to install the uh, power junction box. It's kind of like the fuse box for a spaceship. So here's another huge dip. Uh, a lot of rookies messed this part up. If you know everything is going to go inside the ship, it's best if you use the attractor to bring them up off the barge and just float them inside the ship before you put the floor in place. I've seen too many rookies who assemble a ship and then they have to pull each item in through the airlock one at a time. Oh, talk about some dumb dumps. Now, as a courtesy, I like to pre-strap down some of the items that are inside the ship ahead of time. Of course, we don't always strap everything down because we don't exactly know where the crew's going to want everything all the time. But it's really nice and they really appreciate it when you at least get some of it strapped down. That way, it don't get out of hand when they're coming in. Plus, you definitely want to strap down things like coolant tanks and fuel tanks and whatnot that really don't want to get banging around and cause some serious problems. Now you might see me kicking my visor a couple of times here and there. I just want to make sure that there ain't nothing missing that was supposed to come off the barge. And the visor, it's real easy to tell. Especially when they pull that barge up, sometimes they stop it a little quickly and some items will float right off of it and try to get out into space. And you don't want stuff getting away because you get docked for it.
Now here we're gonna leave them a little invoice bill for you know the work done. Just leave it out there in the middle because you know they're gonna go through all the cargo. It's gonna be one of the first things they see. And then we're gonna exit out of the ship. And this will be when we pressurize it to make sure it's, you know, not leaking or nothing. Now this customer, he uh, ordered some little extras on the outside. You know, some customers like to uh, gussy up their mackerels with these kind of like side panels, the kind of like racing stripes, you know, and the little cone on the front, like, you know, like maybe it's making it more aerodynamic, you know, like they were air in space, but hey, what the customer wants, the customer gets. So we're gonna weld on all of these side panels right quick. For one, hey, how'd you like that there, huh? It's like move, huh? I can tell you're impressed. So we just about done here. First, we uh, gotta install this thing on the back. This is actually for the transponder, and it's a thing on the top. This is so the uh, pilots can get uh, HBO and Skinamax and all that. And there you go. The ship is done. What else do you want? Alright, get out of here. <laughs> Look out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed your time with uh, my cousin Vinny. As he walked you through building a ship rather than salvaging one the way I normally do. <laughs> I also hope that nobody took any offense to what is a, intentionally a very terrible accent and, uh, you know, some, uh, some jokes about unions. It does not in any way reflect personal political beliefs. This is all in jest and uh, just having a little bit of fun with something. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. And, uh, you know, any comments, whatever you want to say about it, you know, hit the comment section. And this was a, it was a quite a challenge to make, and it was fun, and I enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And, uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Who knows what else will come down the line. But uh, thank you very much for hanging out with me, and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>